so excited about what's been happening uh, with this new project, uh, I Am Compelled. And we can actually say between the two of us, I, I Am, am Compelled. Compelled. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I Am Compelled, <laughs> uh, without a doubt. Welcome to the Compel Family Life Center, where our leader is Superintendent W. Aaron Robbins and our amazing First Lady, Dr. Lacey C. Robbins. We are located at 4057 North Mayfair Road, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, 53222. Join us for worship as we are committed to Christ, family, and community. At Compel, we have something for everyone, and we meet the whole family in worship. Thanks for joining us today. You won't leave the same. Welcome to the Compel him. Family Life Center. When it comes, the anointing will repel it. In the mighty name of Jesus, stop the mouths of those that have set themselves against it. In the name of Jesus, Father, give him a word today. Let him die to self. Let him die to himself. And when they speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And Father, we be so careful to give your name all of the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Let the household of God say, thank God. Come on, thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. Let's clap our hands and give the Lord praise, everybody. Bless the Lord. Come on, put something in your mouth and praise the Lord today. Come on, saints, let's put something in our mouth and praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. God, in his infinite wisdom, thought it not a robbery for with us to be here today. We have gathered for no other reason but to worship and magnify the Lord. I want everyone now to just take a moment, just 30, 30 seconds, and let's change the atmosphere for a miracle in this house today. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice and begin to cry out to the Lord this morning how much you love him, how much you need him today, how much you want him. Come on, that's what we came to do today. This is a moment that only you and God can get there today. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. I'll just lift that mouth, open that lip, and say something to God today. Even with your mask on, let him hear you today. Let him see you worship this morning. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Lord, you're worthy. We magnify you. God, you are awesome. You are our King. You are our Lord. And we love you today. We magnify you. You are our shepherd. You are our king. You are our ruler. You are our judge. You are our everything. And we love you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you today, Lord. We love you today, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace today. And we bless you this morning, Lord. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, get in that secret place. Some of you haven't been in worship all week, but this is what you need to do right here. And we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our soul worship you. Our spirit magnify you. We bless you this morning. If you don't even know what to say, just wave your hands to him. And we give you glory. And we glorify you. With the fruit of our lips, we praise you. We give you glory, Lord. You're so worthy. And we magnify you this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are an awesome God. And we praise you. And 
Come on, don't tell him about your problem, but tell him how wonderful he is. Think about what he's done for you. Think about the doors he's opened for you. Think about how he kept you. Hallelujah. How he protected you. How he keeps solving problems. How he keeps restoring you. Hallelujah. And we praise you this morning, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, I want everybody to just take 10 seconds and clap your hands and praise the Lord as loud as you can give him this morning. Come on, clap them like you want it. This is not entertainment, but this is a moment to get to God. Come on, tell somebody, I need a miracle. Come on, look at somebody and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I need a miracle today. And I ain't leaving here the same way I came. Hasha, yeah. I need a breakthrough this morning. I need deliverance this morning. And I'm not leaving here the same way I came in this house. I came to be stronger. I came because he's mightier. I came because he's a way maker. Yeah. Why don't you just look at three people and tell them it's done in Jesus' name. It's done in Jesus' name. Come on. It's done. Agree with somebody and tell them whatever it is, it's done in Jesus' name. Whatever you're waiting for, that's what you came for. It's done in Jesus' name. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, hallelujah. Happy anniversary, Compel. Six years. We are blessed, y'all. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we go. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. We're blessed. We're blessed. blessed. Come on. We're blessed. 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 Come on. Blessed. 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 We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Come on. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come. When we go. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil, for the devil is defeated. And we are blessed. We're blessed in the field. Come on. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Come on. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come, when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must be. For the be. devil is. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Come on. He's, He's going to work in your favor. Come on. Late in the midnight hour, God. God's going to turn it around. He, He's going to work in your favor. Hey. Late in the midnight Late hour, Late in the midnight hour, God. God's going to turn it around. He, He's going to work in your favor. And around, 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 and around.
Something wonderful. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something wonderful and awesome. Something wonderful and awesome. That only He, only he can give the glory. Oh. God is doing something wonderful. Incredible. Incredible and awesome. God, God is doing, doing something me. wonderful. Incredible and awesome. God is doing something 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 wonderful. Incredible and awesome. Wonderful, incredible, and awesome. God is doing something wonderful, incredible, and awesome. Like the devil's in between them. God is, God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. Hallelujah! But something wonderful is getting ready to happen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all ready? Okay, come on, let's cue it, let's go. The Lord bless all of you that are online today. So let's say good morning to all of our visitors today that are visiting with us online. Thank God for all of our visitors that are here on this morning. Anybody excited about the Lord? All right, do me a favor. Everyone now pay attention to your screen. We have special guests that are with us all the way from Detroit, Michigan. God bless and what a joy it is for me to have this opportunity to celebrate with my dear brother and sister, Superintendent and First Lady W. Aaron Robbins Sr. and the entire Compel Family Life Center on your sixth anniversary celebration. It has been a joy of mine to be able to watch the growth of this great ministry and to applaud the ministry efforts of my dear brother, Brother Aaron Robbins. I pray that you will continue to have success and that God will continue to bless you in a special way. Remember that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endured to the end. I want to tell you to hang in there because God has something greater in store for you. God bless you and I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, that is with us this morning, all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. I am Linwood Dillard, the pastor of the Citadel of Deliverance right here in Memphis, Tennessee as well as serve as the jurisdictional bishop of the Tennessee Metropolitan Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, and of course, the chairman of the International AIM Convention of the Church of God in Christ. I could not let this day pass without participating and sharing and expressing 
how enamored and excited I am to share in today's celebrations of six years of ministry, the Compel Family Life Center Church there in Wisconsin, led by my brother and my sister, the Pastor Aaron and Lady Dr. Lacey Robbins. Listen, we are so uh, fired up about what God is doing through you all there in the Wisconsin area. And uh, we can only imagine what the future will hold as we look back over these past six years and just see how God has led you all and how he has grown and expanded you and enlarged your borders. And guess what? The best is yet to come. All the way from Memphis, you have a group of people who are praying for you, rooting for you, and of course, supporting you in every endeavor. I know it has not always been easy, but God has been faithful. And obviously you have been faithful and consistent. And I know that's what God rewards. And you're going to continue to see the hand of God's favor and God's greatest blessings extended toward you and your awesome church. Again, we honor you, we celebrate you, and we say happy sixth anniversary as a ministry and encourage you to continue to do what God has called for you to do in this hour. The Bible says that the nation of Israel celebrated the Lord's goodness of how he blessed them and helped them to overcome their enemy. And between the place of Mizpah and Shen, the Bible says that the prophet of God dropped the stone and called it Ebenezer and said, hitherto the Lord has helped us. And I know that's your testimony on today. Up until now, God has helped us. And guess what? God is not through with you yet. God is up to something and you're right in the middle of it. Something good is getting ready to happen to you right now and in the future. God bless you and happy anniversary. All the way from Detroit, Michigan, Dr. Dorinda. Hello, hello everyone. I am so happy to be able to come your way. Yes, I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. I could not miss this night. I'm so glad that I did get the memo. And I understand that there is a celebration going on right there. And guess what? Bam, I'm there with you. <laughs> it's But I am so happy. Oh my goodness, six years of the Compel Family Life Center that you all have been going strong. And I've been watching your services. Oh my God. Superintendent Robbins had been preaching. Lord have mercy. And Lord, and you know, First Lady Lacey ain't been half-stepping. She been coming on up too. Yes. So I just wanted to really stop to just encourage the um, the church family to keep on doing what you're doing. It is amazing to see how God can blow your mind in such a short time. Six years. I've seen so much happen with the Capel Family Life Center. I seen you come from one church door into a brand new church door. Yes. I seen many of y'all, I'm talking about in spirit. I seen many of you all how the Lord has blessed you because of your faithfulness and how God has promised you some things and you have walked into it because you stay faithful to the ministry. And God has not forgotten about you. Matter of fact, he's working on some stuff right now because of the six years that you've been a part of the ministry. And some of y'all came in on the telly and you're going to be blessed too. <laughs> That's right. I got to say this, and I'm so proud of Superintendent Aaron Robbins and Lady Lacey for their diligence, their faithfulness, um, their stick to itness. Um, there are a lot of churches that have been closing down even in the pandemic because they couldn't last. But who would have ever thought that um, Compel Family Life Center would go into a new church in a pandemic? Wow. Favor God must be on your life. 
Yes, Lord. And you ought to be glad that you are part of it. Well, I came to celebrate with you all, and I'm so, so proud of what um, Superintendent Robbins and Lady uh, Lacey Robbins is doing. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I'm so excited about the future of the church. I'm excited about the future of their lives. And I believe that if you stick with it, a compel life center that God is going to show you how blessed you can be and how faithful you are is how blessed you will be all right congratulations on the sixth year anniversary may God bless you with many many more until you burn the mortgage all right I love you and I'm gonna be there too <laughs> I love y'all you take care God bless and um May you continue to uh, do the will of the Lord and that God's blessings be upon you as you do it. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. Bye-bye. Come on, y'all can do better than Ackerfell. That's wow. God is good. Wow. God is so good to us. I mean, to hear from the presiding bishop of the church is just phenomenal that he would take time and honor us and send video congratulations. And then Chairman Dillard, who is one of the young sons of our church, who is thriving in the city of Memphis, Tennessee, sending remarks as well as my friend, Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole, all of her busy schedule that they would pay attention to us on today God is faithful to us amen praising God I don't want to uh, labor the time we will receive our anniversary gifts on today in a few moments I want you all to prepare yourselves for that as well in a, in a few moments but I just want to get to the word of the Lord on today anybody who came to hear the word of the Lord today believe that there is a word from the Lord and I want to share it with you. God bless again everyone who was online today with us. Uh, Compel that is online and wasn't able to make it to church today. We totally understand. Uh, did everyone get your letter for this anniversary? I want to make sure all of the members, they, if you did not receive it, check your email or see Sister Lee today. Again, that information is so important because inside of that letter, not only are we dealing with um, the theme on today, but also how the Lord has blessed us in just a few weeks and months. So many things have happened. Um, I, I've actually, this wasn't even all in that letter. All that has not happened was even in the letter. Inside the letter, we talked about how we upgraded the entire lighting system of the sanctuary. We updated the entire lighting system, wiring. Um, we updated the entire sound system of the church. Because this is important because a lot of times you go to church, Leah, and you don't know where a dime goes. But I think it's important that when you have tithe and offering, you know where you're investing in. So you, you, you updated your entire uh, lighting system. You updated your entire sanctuary with sound and audio equipment. Uh, we brought... Uh, new drums, we bought new microphones, we refurbished the carpet. That project is not done yet. We're still in process of doing some more replacement carpet and repairs throughout the entire building. We've transformed the parsonage next door. Some of you haven't gone over there, but literally, we're still transforming that entire parsonage. Your tithes and your offering, those of you that are giving online every Sunday, I want you to know where your money is going. We've had to, uh, I want to thank God for Elder Lindell Lee, who came in and made sure all of the entrance and exit doors were refurbished, make sure they were put in place. You know, Deacon Coverton came in, make sure we had locksmith, changed locks. Believe it or not, one door cost us $500 alone just to upgrade what was there in those mechanics. We've just been able to do so many different things. Uh, one thing about when you get a new building, you also have all of these inspections 
One day they came, Dr. Coppins called me literally. I was having brunch with my wife. She said, get on over here. I said, what's going on? The fire marshal is here. And they inspected the entire building from the roof to the floor. I said, Lord, all I could hear was ching, 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 ching. And he was going through and he was writing and he was going through the kitchen. He was going through the stoves. And I said, here we go. I said, they want to get me. But y'all, we had maybe four violations in the entire building. God has been faithful to this church. Dr. Cole said it better than I could. Folk are closing down. Churches are now trying their best to find out what their future is. And while people are trying to figure out what their future is, Compel Family Life Center, God grew us. God enlarged us. God caused us to prosper. That was the word of the Lord for us. And we continue to receive the word, I'm prospering in the pandemic. Amen. I see you, Deke. We hold on to that word and we believed God. And as I began to pen this letter that I sent to every member, and I want to make sure all of you get this because it does identify some of the things that we have done. I want to preach from that letter this morning. In the book of Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, and I want you all to receive this on today. Those of you that have not received it online, if you would like a copy of the letter, just submit your email address to us in the chat. Send your likes, your hearts, your shares, so we can drive this message home today. Because there are so many people trying to figure out, Prentice, what is going on in this world today. So many pastors are searching for answers today. If I could tally up the phone calls and text messages, Brother Harmon, of people, of pastors that are trying to figure out how do we go back into the church again. I could possibly be a rich man this morning, Sister Nicole. Certainly I'm praying and can, I continue to pray for the Henderson family on today. We buried Sister Nicole's brother. So you all continue to pray for mother as well. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 says it like this. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets, Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaiden hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. But and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into thy vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and she shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And she, said, and she said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay the debt and, and live thou and thy children on the rest. I want to talk for just a few moments from this subject. It's in your letter. God spoke to me just a month ago and said to tell Compel Family Life Center, accelerated growth. See, 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 some of y'all ain't caught that thing just yet. You need to testify to somebody real quick and tell somebody accelerated, accelerated growth. Accelerated growth. 
is on your life. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes, Dorothy. I'm going to deal with it in a second. I want you all to understand something. This passage tells us about a poor widow who was at the end of her rope. The widow was facing very severe circumstances. She is desolate. Her husband is dead. She's left with a bunch of debt. She has no money to even make a payment arrangement. She's done. And as a result, now the creditors are getting ready to not just take her stuff, but the Bible says take her sons too. And according to Jewish customs, it was customary that family would become debtors. Also in the Jewish custom, during that time, a woman could not work. So if you took her sons, the only work or labor that profit could be made for the home would be through them. So if they took her sons, she could not work, which means she would have nothing. So y'all, she's at a place in her life she didn't know what to do. She's in pain, she's in poverty, and she has no answers. But she goes to the prophet, and the prophet says to her, what do you have? And she says, I have nothing but a pot of oil. A pot of oil in that region is like a flask. It's the size of a flask. And she says, that's all I have. Now, it brings us to this point, and I want to talk about it for a few moments. I believe that this passage gives us revelation. I believe this passage also gives us direction and charge for the next few months of this year. That I believe that in this season, that though we are yet in a pandemic, God is going to cause blessings to accelerate. Mm -mm, I didn't get no amen. See there. I said that though we are in the middle of a pandemic, God is going to send harvest at an accelerated rate. Deacon Covenant is in the hallway and y'all still ain't even moving. I said in this season, for the third, because y'all going to wake up this morning, Things are getting ready to happen in an accelerated rate. I'm talking about stuff is going to turn around that was depleted just a few minutes ago. It's going to overflow like that. Phone calls, contracts, open doors, favor is getting released, and God said acceleration. <laughs> Tell somebody real quick and prophesy and say accelerated rate is on your life. Accelerated. Accelerated growth. Accelerated time. Expedited season. Y'all ain't hearing what I said. Somebody shout accelerated growth. I want us to understand this today. That he has made covenant with his people. I told you in the beginning of the year that in order for us to see God, we had to be spiritual. I said it in January. You cannot understand this season unless you put on your spiritual eye. God cares more than about problems. God cares more about you more than your problems. You got to realize that this woman is in, in a place of Desolation. She is at a place of, I have nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do. This widow's life is at a place where she knew nothing how to get where she was trying to go. But she had one thing that stood for her. And that was her life of devotion unto God. You see, her husband was one of the sons of the prophet. So because her husband was in ministry, she was in ministry as well. So when he gave, she gave. When he went out, she went out. And I believe today that God is releasing to those who are releasing back to you. What do you mean? If you gave your time, you gave your effort, if you gave your voice, you gave your time, you gave your tithe, you gave your offering, I believe because of your faithfulness, God is going to send release back to you because you have been faithful. In spite of her pain, in spite of her problems, in spite of her lack of possibilities, she needed help, but she looked to God. 
Even though she couldn't see a way out, she still looked to God. Even though she didn't understand how things were going to happen, she believed that God cared enough for her that he would not allow her to die. I came to tell us this morning, those of you that are in this room, that some of us have allowed or the enemy has allowed us to feel that we're at our lowest point. We've come to that day, or if you have not come to that day, you will come to that day. And some have already experienced it before. But I can testify to you this morning that in spite of being at my lowest, I found direction in Christ Jesus. When others turned their back on me, God always was there for me. When others did not stand with me, God stood for me. Oh, preach, Pastor. When I felt like didn't nobody care about me, and all I had was a praise unto God, somehow, some way, God ministered to my spirit. When could nobody else see me? But the, I was reminded of the word, uh, uh, brother, uh, brother Harmon, where the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Uh, I know people could not see me, but I knew God seen me. I know people could not understand me, but God understood me. And I want you all to realize today that no matter what you are facing today, there is nothing hidden from the eyesight of God. God cares for you. God loves you. God is covering you. God is taking care of you. For the Bible says to us, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities. But in all places he was tempted. That leads us to know that God knows everything you're dealing with, every concern you have, every heartache you have, every situation you're going through. But God is not looking at you with disgust. God is not looking at you with pain and anger. God is looking to see what I can do to magnify you, what I can do to cause you to grow. What can I do to cause you to be triumphant in this hour? I came to tell the believer today, if I don't say nothing else, I want to leave you with this. God is able. <laughs> Look down the row and tell somebody God is able. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. I came to tell you number two that your obstacles are something that I want to talk about for a moment. Obstacles release your potential. I'm gonna say it again. Obstacles release your potential. Yeah. See, it would have been easy for the prophet to have said to her, "Well, just go home and die then." Just go home. Matter of fact, it would have been real easy if he's real spiritual. Just go home and just wait on God, baby. Just wait on God. Y'all know how we do. Just wait on God. Yeah, but instead of that, the prophet looked for an opportunity so that this woman could grow. Instead, the Lord chooses to involve her in her own miracle. So God, what he has to do is, God changes her whole dynamics of how she's seen things. You see, many times, y'all, we think we have more than what we realize. The truth of the matter is, nothing can be done without the faithfulness of God. Let me say that one more time. Nothing can be done without the faithfulness of God. Though you may be smart, though you may have resources, though you may be uh, educated, the truth of the matter is, it means nothing if you don't have Christ Jesus. And the Lord does so by asking a question to her. He says, basically, what do you need, number one? And then he says to her, what do you have? So he rearranges, he changes her whole look, her whole perspective. Because what she needed to realize was, number one, she had nothing. Well, she, did, well, she had a problem, but she realized, she had to realize that her problem that she had was much more bigger than what her resources were. We've got to realize today that God understands every aspect of your situation. But oftentimes, we're unable to see past our situation because we're so focused on the situation itself. We've got to realize today that in order for God to supply the need you may have, you've got to erase some of the thoughts that have been damaged and placed in your spirit. Sometimes, y'all, we have too many negative things or negative experiences that can't cause us to go any further than where we are right now. I came to tell you today that God will not be able to move past where your faith is until you expand it. 
What do you mean, Pastor Robbins? You must understand it is very clear in the battle of Ai. You realize in Joshua chapter 7, Israel had come from a great victory. They were in Jericho. They were feeling confident about themselves. They were feeling confident about their abilities and their strength. But they failed to look to the Lord to help them even with the small things. See, you've got to realize today that what may be big to some may be small to others but there is one common denominator that if I'm going to get through it only God is going to be able to carry me through and we've got to realize in this season I've got to humble myself before the hand of God so in order for me to enjoy what God has for me I've got to put God first in my life so what God has to do is first he has to show us ourselves but then number two he also has to expand our faith come on somebody say expand my faith expand come on do it like I'm doing expand my faith see God he, God changes her, her her projections but he also begins the process of expansion he expands her faith how does he do that well he does it first of all by showing her through the question he says to her what do you have in your house that question was designed to show her the reality that what you think is not much is just what you need <laughs> lord help me here today she was ready for god to do it but god wanted her to understand and understand it by seeing it for herself can i just put a pause on my own message you've got to see it before you see it if you're ever gonna see it i'm, I'm gonna say it one more time just prophesy to somebody and say if you're going to see it you've got to see it before you see it, if you're ever going to see it. Yeah, that's right. Can't nobody tell you what God's going to do like you can tell it for yourself. But you got to see yourself expanding. You have to see yourself in your house. You got to see yourself. Come on, y'all. I know you see your bills, but can you see yourself debt free? <laughs> I know you see, see this is the thing y'all we just magnify him and praise him for a new job and a new car but I wonder do I have a believer in here that can praise God for pay, erasing all my debts paying off all my credit cards paying off all my student loans Y'all quiet in here. Not only can God bless me with a job, but God can cause me to be triumphant in my career. He can cause me to flourish in my, in my direction. He can cause me to be victorious in every aspect of my life. But I came to ask compel one question. Can you see it? God, help me here today. Just look at three people and ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, can you see it? <laughs> see, some of y'all don't understand. You got to see yourself. You got to see that house. You got you to gotta see your future. You got to see your checking account. That, not just with 20 and 30. You got to see 10,000, 20,000. You got to see 30. Come on, y'all. Talk to the pastor. You just can't just see a house, mother folks. You got to see yourself with a vacation home God help me preach here today you gotta see look at somebody and ask your neighbor can you see yourself uh, I know you see yourself on a vacation I know you see yourself walking on the ocean and I know you see yourself riding in the sand but I cannot tell you can you see yourself living on a beachfront property can you see my God can you see yourself doing my God webinars can you see yourself teaching thousands can you see you look at three people and tell them can you see it can you see it you got to expand come on somebody you got to expand your faith you got to be beyond this you got to be beyond just having that you got to be beyond just getting through this God wants us to be expanded and I got Bible for it for the Bible tells us these words he said but my God shall supply my every need but he says it like this Deacon Covington not according to my credit score but he says according to his riches 
<laughs> See, if it was good, if it was my checking account, but he says by his checking account, and he says by his riches in his glory, which recognizes his record. I came to tell you, God has never lost. He's never been defeated. He's never been a victim. He's always won. And I wonder here today that if you don't have nothing else to shout on, can you shout on what you see God doing for you? Watch this. Come on, y'all be seated. Let me get out your way here. He says it like this. God expands it individually. But God also wants to expand your vision. God wants to expand your faith visibly. He, the, widow told, the widow was told, now, what you got to do is, you go and go get some vessels. <laughs> he said, now go get some vessels. He said, go get some empty vessels. He said, go to your neighbors and go get some empty vessels. Now, y'all, this is an uneasy process for her. Because, come on, let's tell the truth. Everybody in the neighborhood knows they done took her camels. <laughs> Everybody in the neighborhood knows her lights are off. Come on, don't act like y'all don't know when, when, when the creditors are knocking at your door. You know the difference between a white envelope and a red envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, creditors are knocking at the door. And she knows they're on the way. And don't you know your neighbor knows it too? And so the prophet tells her, now go to them same neighbors and borrow vessels. You know, one thing about God is, y'all, God oftentimes allows us to go through a process, but I want us to understand the process is for your making, not for humiliation. I'm going to say it again. It's for your making, not for humiliation. Uh, and a part of that making is frustration. A part of that making is sometimes disappointment. Come on now, y'all. Y'all don't get quiet on me now. So, sometimes a part of that process is anger. Sometimes in that process, y'all, there will be tears. There will be frustration. But you got to realize it's not for humiliation. It's for my, pros my progress. You have to let sometimes your life become that billboard of advertisement. Because the truth of the world is this. The world is lost. The world is searching. But if your life can be advertisement for God's covenant, then I'm going to tell you this morning, Lord, use me. He says it in his word. He says, for we are his workmanship. That means that we're literally in the workman's uh, uh, cabinet. We're in the workman's uh, place. God is crafting us. God is molding and making us. Because the word says we have been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I came to tell y'all today, there is nothing that God has put in you that is bad. Everything God placed in you is for your good. And God is ordaining you to become what he has promised to you, but you got to hang in there. And I believe this in this season, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Number three, I believe that accelerated growth is coming to Compel Family Life Center. Oh, I just felt the Holy Ghost when I said it. He said, not coming, I'm already here. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm already here. God just told me that. God, 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 God just reminded me. It's not in my notes, but literally, God just reminded me of Wednesday, the other Wednesday night, and how Elder Lee came to Pastor and said, Come outside. I came outside, and there was a Caucasian gentleman with this big old tractor. And I said, What is this? He said, I didn't say anything to you, but I went and told people about what your vision was. And because I told them about the vision, they believed in it 
and they sold into the church debt free just handed over the keys and took it God spoke to me and said to preach to you all about his provision now this is not a prosperity message I'm talking about his provision the woman and her sons had one vessel and he God told them take that vessel and borrow others and pour <laughs> see the faith that God changed and expanded now had to be used in order to be provided provision God's provision he speaks to me today to tell us that his provision has never changed Satan the devil always wants to put it in our minds that God is not going to do so uh -uh, no let me help y'all today this episode at Capel Family Life Center I want y'all to realize this morning God has never changed yeah God is going to do I'm gonna say it to y'all God is gonna do exactly what he promised you and everything he showed you it will be fulfilled my God here today he meant it I want y'all to realize God did not make a mistake when he showed you God did not just make things just appear to you God wants everything that he promised you come to pass for the Bible says that there are by two immutable things in which was it was impossible for God to do he says for God is not to lie that means that even though the world may lie, God's word will not lie. If God promised it, it's going to happen. So I can rest on this assurity that whatever God showed me <laughs> and whatever Satan tries to put in my way, it's not going to stop what God has promised. I came to tell us today that not only is his provision not going to change, but I got to tell you number two. His provision is, has no limit. Woo. Somebody shout, no limits to God's favor. Come on, say it one more time. There is no limit to God's favor. The oil flowed until the vessels ran out. I'm going to say it again. The oil flowed until vessels ran out. <laughs> say it again, Pastor. The oil flowed until there was no more vessels. <laughs> for those of you that are in sales for those of you that are in direct uh, contact in your business those of you that are in places where it seems like they're getting ready to close I came to tell you today that there is no limit to God's supply all you have to do is keep your oil and just let God provide you some vessels and the more vessels the more he's going to keep pouring huh? there is no limit to God's provision in this widow's case all she had to do y'all was just keep on getting vessels God is able to not just meet your needs but God is able to move your mountains God is able to solve problems God's provision is not limited by himself but his limit is only based on how limited your faith is and my brothers and my sisters I came to remind us today that God stands ready to release more and no less God stands in this place this morning ready to release more and no less I'm gonna say it again God stands in this tabernacle ready to release more <laughs> I'm ready to release more blessing. I'm ready to release more favor. I, I'm ready to release more promotion. I don't under, oh God, I wish I had somebody. I'm ready to release more and no less. I'm not talking about taking from you, but I'm talking about increasing you. I'm talking about adding to you. I'm talking about finding you. You all got to realize that in this season, there may be some things that you didn't know existed, but God will speak to your spirit and tell you directions God will speak to your spirit and give you initiatives and you didn't even know it existed but the spirit of the Lord will awaken in you because I want you to realize the more vessels you have the more oil will be supplied you've got to realize that in this season it's not
not according to man, but it's according to your faith. For the Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We've got to understand today that there is no limit to his provision. But last, I got to get out of your way. There is no sad, there is no way to control his provision. Tell somebody there's no control to God's provision. Can I tell you something that not only does God want to settle debts, but God wants to take care of your future. I must say that one more time. Uh, God just doesn't want to pay your bills, but God wants to take care of your future. God wants to take care of all the things you've been challenged with, but he wants to take care of your tomorrow as well. We've got to realize that in this season, and that God is a God that's not going to change his, his plan. If God made a promise to you, you've got to catch up with the vision that God made to you. Some of it may have been in the 90s. Some of it may have been 10 years ago. Some of it may have been in 1920, uh, 1985. But regardless of whenever the time was, you got to trust and believe that God was the God yesterday. He's the same God today and he's the same God tomorrow but the Bible tells us that he is the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask just stop right there above all that I could ask y'all ain't got excited about that above all that I could ask Y'all forgive Pastor Robbins. I got a whole laundry list of things I could ask God for. But he says now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or even I could think. What are you trying to say, Pastor Robbins? Not only does God want to advance you, but God wants to expand you. So I came to prophesy to somebody, just because things didn't go right last year, God is moving things fast forward. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, just because things haven't gone the way you planned, tell them just in case you were worried about your future say I came to tell you this morning don't worry about your future God is holding everything he's got your son he got your daughter he's got your spouse he's got your house he's got your finances but you got to hang on there tell somebody hang on in there God is getting ready to do it y'all can I prophesy to somebody in this season I'm sorry y'all if you can't see it this is not just the beginning God got something else for Compel Family Life Center I know we shouting this morning on being on Mayfair Road I came to tell you today expansion is on this church y'all ain't gonna hear me today debt cancellation is on this church I ain't gonna hear y'all today I believe that in this season mortgages are being paid off I'm sorry y'all I'm out there this morning I believe he's not gonna give me just a car but he gonna give me options y'all ain't gonna help me preach there's somebody here you've been waiting on God and it seems like things won't happen I came to tell you today just because it didn't happen yesterday I came to announce today it's a new day just like it didn't happen God said new day God said new opportunities God says new doors because favor 
yourself. I said favor is on my life. Favor is being released on my family. Favor on my job. Favor on my family. Favor. Somebody shout favor. Somebody shout favor. Accelerated growth. Accelerated growth. Let me speak to you today. And for the things that the canker worm, the caterpillar, tried to take God is bringing to you those things that you thought were lost thank you Lord and I'm going to cause those areas that seem lost to be an investment for your future. I just felt that in my spirit today. Your heartache is an investment towards the favor that God's getting ready to release on your life. Come on. Some of us don't understand. These hardships are investments. The way is being made for you. Lift that hand up. You're having a struggle right now. Just lift that hand to the Lord. Come on, just say something to the Lord. Worship the Lord for a minute. Some of you have a vision, but you don't have a plan. You have a vision, but you don't have a plan. Some of you have resources, but you don't have a direction that hand to the Lord and in your worship God gonna speak to you just stay right where you are just worship the Lord Ooh. and let the Lord do something fresh in you let him breathe into your mind let him breathe into your spirit it's been hard it's been difficult but God has more in this season for his people God has more more God has more for you come on somebody say God has more for me come on shout it God has more for me let's say it one more time for the, in the Holy Ghost God has more for me I'm not talking about just money I'm talking about open doors I'm talking about streams God is doing something fresh something fresh and brand new in your life today I'm getting ready to release in your home in your house in your finances fresh and new in your life today father I thank you for your word I thank you for what has been spoken here in this place we thank you Lord for what has been spoken to these your people Lord it is not by accident God is because of you. And Lord, I speak now that you would cause your people to rise above this season. Let thy work, let thy word rise in us that we would be what you've called us to be in this last and this evil day. God, we look unto thee for our strength, our help. For you are faithful to us. Thank you for your favor, your blessings that are flowing in my life now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for expansion. I thank you for supplying everything I have need of. I thank you for releasing your power upon us even now in the name of Jesus. I 
bless you and I give you glory. For unto thy will, God, it shall be done in the name of Jesus. Satan, I cast you out now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you that would try to cause us to be fearful. But I come against worry. I bind fear now in the name of Jesus. It has no residence in my family, my spirit, my mind today. I evict it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak life over every dream, every vision today. Clear directions and pathways now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you now for who you are in us in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want everybody to give God praise for what he's getting ready to do in your life. Come on, is that the best you can give God for what he's getting ready to do for you? Somebody shout, it is done. Come on, somebody shout, it is done. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Anybody excited about your future? Let me see your hand real quick. Huh? Woo, I'm excited. Look at somebody and tell them I'm excited about my own future. I'm like, Man, this great, great and mighty things are getting ready to happen for you today. Just like he did it for us. He's getting ready to do it for you. It has already started. Testimonies have already come in. I'm compiling testimonials. A few weeks ago, I ain't going to tell his word. Just a few weeks ago, I got to do something quickly and compel, compel. I got to put y'all back in prayer. I got to put y'all back in prayer. I haven't talked to Brother Harmon. I got to put y'all back in prayer. This is Pentecost season, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then he says, I will send you a comforter. That is his spirit, the Holy Ghost. And we got to get back on our knees on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 7. Until Pentecost, we will be here in person on Wednesday evenings. 6.30 to 7, we will be on our face praying. I will give a 30-minute lesson. I promise you I will dismiss by 7.30. But 6.30 to 7, we will be on our face seeking the face of the Lord. Y'all may not believe miracles happen on Wednesday night, but I came to tell you miracles do happen. It was about three weeks ago. I went about three weeks ago on a Wednesday, maybe three, about three, four, four weeks ago. We were in prayer in here. And I, sp I spoke over Deacon Covington. Didn't it, wasn't that about, was about three, four weeks ago, said Daniel? He told me some stuff, and I said, none of it agreed in my spirit, Daniel. I was praying against it. I said, no, 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 no. I ain't heard the Lord that on that one. Because normally when, he, when, it's, when, it's, when, it's, when it's true, Daniel, he going to tell me. I didn't hear the Lord say nothing. I said, all right, Lord, this is, this is going to be me and you. Now, I need you to work this out. We were in prayer, and I, we, I think it was at the end of the service. Well, it was like the end, and the Lord told me to speak to Covington and tell him a new position, a new door in this city in the name of Jesus. I got a text message Friday. I'm telling you, I'm telling you in this season. I'll let him tell it for you, for his own self. But you better trust God in this season. But it's a, listen, it's a process now. It's, it's a making process and it's not easy. But the only way you're gonna get through it is you gotta be in prayer. 
prayer makes you. Prayer develops you. Especially when you got a bad attitude. Especially when you when you when you're angry, you're fussy. You you need prayer to help that mind, help your spirit cultivate you. Because when you when you got that kind of nature, come on now, y'all. When you got that kind of nature, that nature will rise up when you get disappointed. That nature will rise up when you get frustrated. And that prayer will cultivate you. And you never know what God gonna say. Now I got another assignment. Now, Lord, she's not here today. But I need you to change Sister Vern's employment. I need now a promotion, financial increase in the Shaya Shokoda Bahaya. Whatever she need, God do it right here in Milwaukee County in the name of Jesus. Right? That's, that's the new one. I'm not, I'm not going to stop until God does so. And I believe that whatever I say unto the Lord, the Lord going to hear me. Y'all want God to do some things in you and for you and through you. Be back here Wednesday at 630. Amen. The Lord bless you. I want everybody to prepare yourselves. I've already received some of the anniversaries. I want everyone now to prepare your heart today. We're going to give our tithe unto the Lord. It's had nothing to do with our tithe. But everybody that's in covenant with God, this is your chance. Those of you that are online, the information is already on your screen. It's getting ready to come up on the screen here in the sanctuary as well. You can give multiple places. You can either give through GiveLify. You look up Compel Family Life Center. Or you can do Cash App. You can do Cash Symbol. C-F-L-C-M-K-E or you can do cast symbol Rev Rob. That information is provided for you on the screen. If you're here in the sanctuary and you want to give, because of the CDC guidelines and regulations we're only allowing one person to serve and he will serve you. Deacon Covington is standing there. If you need to offer an envelope, just slip your hand up. He will come and serve you on today. We praise God for his faithfulness. We praise God for our Elder Lee making sure things are properly accommodated and in place today amen i want every tither every tither today every tither today i want you to i want you to stand with us in the word of god believing that his word believing that his promises are true y'all i'm telling you today it is so important that in this season we decree and declare the word of God. For the Bible tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Every believer, every covenant believer that is tithing today, I want you to stand with the word of God. I want you to stand in covenant today, trusting and believing the Lord today. This is just our tithe alone. We're just asking God to bless us. We're asking God to do so. Repeat these words after me. We are prosperous people. We are debt-free people. We are 100% tithers. We are cheerful givers. The windows of heaven have been opened. The doors of failure have been closed. Our need is supplied. We live in the realm of the unexpected. We are blessed and cannot be cursed. We grow broader through ministry, stronger through worship, warmer through fellowship, deeper through discipleship, and larger through evangelism. We are Compel Family Life Center. Your best is yet to come. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you want to be served, he can come and it will come to you. Just slip your hand up and he'll come to you at this time. And let him serve you on this morning. Oh, when I sow my seed. Come on, everybody. When I sow my seed, oh. When I sow my seed into the ground, into the ground I'll be blessed 100 fold. I'll be blessed 100 fold. When I sow. Hundred. 
100-fold. Somebody shout 100-fold blessing. 100-fold blessing. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your tithe. And I want everybody now, those of you that are giving your anniversary today, stand on your feet this morning. I just gave mine this morning. If you already given it, just stand on your feet this morning. I want you to be recognized today. Amen. We have two Sundays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you all to realize that as you're giving, those of you that are online, if you want to share that $200 gift, some people are doing it $100 this Sunday. Some people are doing $100 next Sunday. And I want you all to understand that as you're giving, this is what you're giving towards. I'm listing everything that we're doing in this church. I, it's so important that people know where their finances are going. It's so important that people know where their tithe is going because we have a whole lot of people who represent the Lord but aren't representing his kingdom. I believe that it's imperative that we understand that in this season, this is the last days. I have no time to play with God's people and his money as well. Drive by the church sometime in the evening. We just got all the lights on the grounds working. So when we come on the grounds, now all the lights are working on the grounds here on our campus as well. Let's praise God for what the Lord is doing here today. As we are giving, more things will be done. Hear me today. More things are, just take a walk through pastor's office, first lady's office. Everything is being done here in this church because we want to make sure the house of the Lord represents him. Not something raggedy. Come on, somebody say amen. You can have a church, but you don't take care of it. It means nothing. Amen. So we're updating the lights. We're updating the wiring. We, we have done so many things. It's just so much stuff that we have to do still. And I want you all to be in agreement with us. Because as you give, the more we're going to be able to do. Amen. The Lord bless you. If you want to give that to Deacon Covington, see him right now. If you're giving it electronically, just raise your hand real quick. I want to pray over every seed. Every seed. Now, Father... As we're giving unto thee today, I pray that you blessed every giver. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and God caused it to run over in the name of Jesus. I expect a accelerated return now in the name of Jesus. Release your favor, release your power now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this ministry. I thank you for what you're doing for every covenant believer today. We bless you. We magnify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout, and it is so. If you need Deacon Covington to come to you, just raise your hand. He'll come to you right now, and we'll serve you this morning. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. My parents are giving this morning. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, all of you that are sharing this morning. We have one more Sunday of anniversary. We have special guests here next week. Uh, my friend, my brother, we all know him, uh, Prophet Braxton Bowser will be with us on next Sunday. I'm looking forward to having him. Uh, you all understand that in this season, I want to say this. Uh, I'm talk, talking to Dana this week. Pastors, whew, I'm running on E, y'all. I'm running on E. I want to thank God. I'm doing it all right now. I've been doing praise and worship now for about a year or so now. Sister Danielle's had some complications, uh, but pastors got to get out of this role. Hallelujah to God. Yeah, about, to, about to kill this 46 year old amen doing all of this and preparation and all of that it's a whole lot and uh, I'm so thankful that I'm going to hurry up and get somebody uh, quickly said the Lord amen and so we don't have to do so much mileage on this year his servant amen and uh, this will be the first Sunday I have not preached and I'm going to take full advantage amen of uh, this next Sunday I've had my close friend and brother to be with us on this Sunday I thank God for my wife we both received our vaccination on Friday praise God for that we are completely vaccinated we are so thankful got through it with little to none complications uh, matter of fact my wife prayed over me against us they say for 24 to 48 hours and uh, we got it Danielle and last night I was sitting on the couch and I got a little warm there for a second I said Satan now you got to go now I ain't gonna wait on no 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 fever when I got to get to church in the morning got to preach and sing and do all the things that we do and y'all just just as quickly as I said it literally my body temperature started going down and I'm so thankful to get through this process. In this season, y'all, I want you all to be very careful in this season. Be watchful, be prayerful. Y'all know what our motto is. We live by faith and we operate in what? In wisdom. 
We live by faith, but we operate in wisdom. We, I'm vaccinated, but I still got my mask. I'm still sanitizing. I want us all to be careful in this season. I don't want another funeral. I thank God we had one Friday, but understand, I don't want another funeral. I want all of you to live and to be well in this season. God has so much more for you. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. We're going home together. God bless everybody that's online today. Pastor Robbins loves each and every one of you. And always remember this. Tomorrow morning, we'll be in prayer, 6 a.m. Prayer is the key to get you where you're headed. Be in prayer with us, 6 o'clock a.m. on Monday morning. Tomorrow morning, we'll be in prayer. And of course, on Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. And always remember this. Come on, compel. Your best is yet to come. Now, Father, go with us. Be with us. Protect us from all danger seen and unseen. We'll be mindful to take no glory into ourselves, but God will to proclaim and tell the world you did it. In the name of Jesus, we'll bless you and magnify you. Cover us with your blood. Hallelujah. Against all danger, against all tragedy, Cover us with your blood today, Lord. Rebuke the day of evil today. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. I love you. Be safe. Amen. You have just been blessed by the ministry of Compel Family Life Center under our leader, Superintendent W. Aaron Robbins. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. right here Central Standard Time. Become a participant in worship here at Compel. Give on Givelify, Cash App, dollar sign CFLC, MKE, or by mail, 4057 North Mayfair Road, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, 53222. You can always visit us online at compelfamily.org. And until next time, remember, your best is yet to come. You have just been blessed.